I strike quickly being moved. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog of the house of Montague moves me. To move is to stir. To be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runst away. A dog of that house moves me to stand. I will take the wall of any man or maid of Montague. That shows thee a weak name. For the weakest goes to the wall. <laughs> True, and women being the weaker vessel are at the rest to the wall. So I will push Montague's men from the wall and thrust his maids to the wall. The quarrel is between our masters and us, their men! Tis all one! I will show myself a tyrant. When I have fought with the men, I will be cruel with the maids. I will cut off their heads. <laughs> the heads of the maids? Aye, oh, the heads of the maids. Or their maiden heads, <laughs> taking what sense thou wilt, they will not hear it. Tis they must take without sense and feel it. <laughs> Me they will feel while I'm able to stand. <laughs> it is known I'm a pretty piece of flesh. <laughs> Draw that tool. Here come two of the house of Montague. Ooh, my naked weapon is out. Uh, quarrel. I'll back thee. Half. Turn thy back and run. Fear me not. No, Mary, I fear thee. Let us take the law of our sides. Let them begin. <laughs> oh, frown as I pass by. Let them take it as they please. <laughs> as they dare. I will bite my thumb at them, which will be a disgrace to them, and they should bear it. Yes. Go now, by and bite thy thumb, and I'll follow after and frown. I bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law on our side if I say I? No! 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 No, I do not bite my thumb at you, <laughs> sir. But I bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? If you do, I'm for you. Mm -hmm. I, sir, as good a man as you. Well, <laughs> sir, no better. Say better! Here comes one of my master's kids. Ah, yes, better, sir! <laughs> <laughs> I 
I do hate the word, as I hate hell, all Montagues, and thee. Have at thee, um, coward. <laughs>
Rosalind? <laughs> <laughs> Gabulous? <laughs> It is you lived at odds so long. Now, madam, what say you to my suit? My child is yet a stranger to this world. Oh, younger than she, our happy mother's maid. And too soon marred are those so early wed. But woo her, gentle Paris. Get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. If she agrees to salve her lips, with voice <laughs> lies by consent and fair according choice. This night I hold an old accustomed feast whereto I have invited many a guest such as I love, and you among the store, one more most welcome, make my numbers more, at my poor house look to behold this night. <laughs> Go, Sarah, trudge about through the vineyard. Find those persons out whose names are listed there. And to them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure stay. Find them out whose names are written here. Find them out whose names are written here. Find them out whose names are written here. It is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard, the tailor with his last, the fisherman with his pencil, the painter with his net. <laughs> but I am sent to find those persons out whose names are here writ, but I cannot find the names the writing person hath here writ. <laughs> I must to the learned dog. <laughs> In good time. <laughs> good den. I pray, sir, can you read? Perhaps he's learned it without book. Ooh. Oh, stay, stay.
whither? <laughs> to supper. To our house? To whose house? Why, my master's! Nay, I'll tell thee without asking. <laughs> my master is the great rich Capulet. And if you be not of the house of Montague, go and crush a cup of wine! Rest you, Mary! <laughs> face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. Imagine every married lineament and see how the one another lends content. And what's obscured in this spare volume lies vibrating in the margin of his eyes. This precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him only needs a cover. Fish lives in the sea, and tis much pride that fair without the fair within do hide. That boy, in many's eyes, does share a glory that in gold class locks in the golden story. So shall you share all that you doth possess by having him making yourself.
I see Queen Mab hath been with you. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, she is the fairy's midwife. She comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn by a team of little acmes. Athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. Her wagon spokes are made of long spinner's legs that cover the wings of grasshoppers, the traces of the smallest spider's web, and the color of the moonshine's watery beam. Her whip of cricket's bone, the lash of film, her wagon, her small gray coated net, not so big as a round little worm, pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. And in the state, she gallops night by night through lovers' brains. And then they dream of love. For courtiers' knees who dream of curtsy state. For lawyers' fingers who straight on dream of fees. For ladies' lips who straight on kisses dream, which oft an angry mab with blisters plagues because her lips with sweetmeats tainted. Ah, 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 ah. Sometimes she gallops over a soldier's neck and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breeches, ambuscado Spanish blades, of helps five fathoms deep, and then of none. Drums in his ear, and then he starts and wakes, and being thus frightened, swears a prayer or two, <laughs> and sleeps again. <laughs> This, by his voice, should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier. What dares the slave come hither covered with an antic face to fear and scorn at our solemnity? Now, by the stock in honor of my king, to strike him dead! <laughs> I hold it not a sin. Why, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? <laughs> no. Madam, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain who has hither come in spite to scorn in our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Is he that villain Romeo? Content thee, gentle cause. Leave him <laughs> alone. 
I would not for the wealth of all this town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore, be patient. Take no note of him. It is my will, the which, if thou respect, show a fair presence and put off these frowns, an ill beseeming semblance for a feast. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. Go to, go to. <laughs> I will withdraw, but this, Intrusion, now seeming sweet, shall convert to bitter gall.
Your mother craves a word with you. <laughs> Mary Bachelor, her mother is the lady of the house. And a good lady, and a wise, and a virtuous. <laughs>
eastern clouds with streaks of light. The sun advances burning eye, the day to cheer, and night stink dew to dry. I must upfill this osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juiced flowers. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh! <laughs> what are my talks so sweet to live in this rain? <laughs> Come, pardon, sin. Was thou with Rosalind? With Rosalind, my ghostly father? No, I have forgot that name, and that name's Woe. That's my good son. But where hast thou been? I'll tell thee, ere thou askest me again. I have been feasting with mine enemy, and clearly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine, and all combined. Save what thou must combine, by holy marriage. I'll tell thee as we pass, but this I pray, thou consent to marry us today. Uh, holy sh... <laughs> St. <Saint> Francis. <laughs> <laughs> what changes here? Is Roslyn, whom he did love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts. <laughs> but in their eyes. <laughs> come, young waverer, come, go with me. In one respect, on thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your family's rancor to pure love. <laughs> Wisely and slow they stumble that run fast. Oh, <laughs> 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 
got leave to go to Shrift today. And hide you to Sister Martha's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. <laughs> Church, go. Follow me close, for I will speak with one of them. <laughs> Gentlemen, gentlemen, a word with one of you. find me apt enough to that, sir, if you will give me occasion. Would you take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consortst with Romeo. Consorst! Oh, consorst. What, would thou make us minstrels? If thou make minstrels of us, you look to hear nothing but discord. Here is my fiddlestick. <laughs> Here, that shall make you dance. <laughs> <laughs> Peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man, Romeo. The love 
I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Oh. Thou art a villain. <laughs> Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and draw. thou have with me? Oh, nothing but one of your nine lives. <laughs> ha! <laughs> I am for you. in your haste proceeding. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a-bleeding. But I'll immerse you with so strong a fine that you shall all repent the loss of mine. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses, nor tears, 
nor prayer shall purchase out abuses. Therefore, use none. Let Romeo hence in haste. Else when he is found, that hour is his last. Bear hence this body, and attend our will. Mercy, but murders, pardoning those that kill. Gallop apace, you fiery-footed steeds, and bring in cloudy night immediately. Draw thy close curtain, love performing night, that runaway eyes may wink, and Romeo may leap into these arms untalked of and unseen. Come, loving, black-browed knight, give me my Romeo. And when he may die, take him and cut him into little stars. And he shall paint the face of heaven so bright that all the world shall fall in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I am but a mansion of love, yet not possessed. And though being sold, not yet enjoyed, so tedious is this day. As is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new clothes but may not wear them. Here comes my nurse. And she brings me. And any tongue that speak but Romeo's name speaks heavenly eloquence. Lady, we are undone. 
hand be grasped. Piteous corpse. Bloody piteous corpse. Tybalt. Tybalt, honest gentleman, that ever I should live to see thee dead. Chamber, I'll find Romeo to comfort you. He's hid at Lawrence's cell. Nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps, and now falls on her bed, and then starts up and now down falls again. Go, get thee to thy love, as was decreed. Ascend her chamber hence, and comfort her. But look thou stay, not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to land abroad, where thou shalt stay. Till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, 
luckily, it is very late. She'll not come down tonight. I promise you, but for your company, I would have been abed an hour ago. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore little have I talked of love. For Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, madam, you yourself count it dangerous that she do give her sorrow so much sway. Then, in your wisdom, haste our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears, which too much minded by herself alone may be put from her by society. Now you do know the reason for my haste. These times of woe afford no time to woo. Madam, commend me to your daughter. I will, and know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she is mewed up to her heaviness. Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me. Nay, more, I doubt it not. On Thursday will I tell her this is so. She shall be married to you, noble Earl. <laughs> will you be ready? My lady, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Oh, well, get ye gone. Oh, Thursday be it then. Farewell, my lord. Oh, it is so very, very late that we may call it early by and by. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Coming to your chamber, the day is broke. Be wary, look about.
now, Juliet? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Evermore weeping for your cousin's death? What? Wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Therefore have done. Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief shows still some want of wit. But now, I tell thee joyful tidings, girl. <laughs> Marry, my child. Early next Thursday morn, the gallant, young, and noble gentleman, the county Paris at St. Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. You no. shall not make me there a joyful but bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed. You. I pray you tell my lord and father, madam, I will no. not. Hang thee, young baggage. Disobedient wretch. I tell thee what. Get thee to the church on Thursday, or never after look me in the face. Speak ah. not, reply not. Do not answer me so. <laughs> My fingers itch. God in heaven bless her, you are to blame, madam, to rate her so. Look to it. Think on it. I do not use to jest. Thursday is near. Lay hand on heart, advise, for by my soul, I'll ne'er acknowledge thee. Talk not for me, or I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done. Here it is. Romeo is banished. Huh? And all the world to nothing. Your first is dead, or twere as good you were. Since the case so stands as now it doth, I think it best you marry Paris. to make confession to this holy friar. No, to answer that I should confess to you. Do not deny to him that you love me. If I do so, it'll be signed behind your back, not spoke to your face. Poor soul. Thy face is much abused with tears. Uh, oh. <laughs> Are you at leisure, Holy Father, now? Or should I come to you in evening past? <laughs> God shield that I should disturb devotion. Uh, um, Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse you. Until that day, Keep this holy kiss. Married to Paris? 
tell me not, sister, how thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. God, join my heart with Romeo's. Thou our hand. Give me some present counsel, or behold, twixt my extremes and me, this bloody knife. Be not as oh, long to speak, I long to die. If rather than to marry County Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leave, rather than marry Paris, from off the battlements of yonder tower. Hold then, go home, be merry. Give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow, tomorrow night. Look that thou lie alone. Take thou this vial, being then in bed, and this distilled liquor drink thou off. Give, give me, me, give me, oh, oh tell me not of fear. fear. When presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humor, for no pulse shall keep his mate of progress but surcease. No warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. The roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade to ashes. Thy eyes' windows fall like death when he shuts up the day of life. Each part, deprived of subtle government, shall stiff and stark and cold appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours, and then awake as from a pleasant sleep. Oh, give me oh, strength, and strength shall help oh, afford. Give me strength. And strange farewell, shall farewell. farewell. God knows when we shall farewell. meet again. God knows when we shall Come meet again. Come <coughs> When the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. <coughs> and, as the manner of our island is, in thy best robes, uncovered on the bier, thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie.
Revive! Look up, or I will die with thee. Help, help, call help. She's dead, deceased, she's dead. Collect the day. Collect the day.
give me Give me poison. Let me have a dram of poison as would disperse itself through all the veins that the life we take her may fall dead. My poverty consents but not my will. You pay my poverty and not my will. this in any liquid thing you will. Drink it off. And if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. was there delayed. Who bear the letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again. Nor get a fisherman to send it thee, so fearful were they of infection. Unhappy fortune! This letter was full of charge, and the neglecting it may do much danger. Friar John, go hence. Ride again to Providence, and I'll keep her in my cell till Romeo come. Sister, I will go. Now must I to the monument alone. Within three hours will fair Juliet wake. She will beshrew me much that Romeo hath had no notice of these accidents. Poor living corpse, clothes in a dead man's tomb. Signal something doth approach. Flowers thy bridal bed I strew. Oh, woe! Thy canopy is dust and stones, with which sweet water nightly will I do. For wanting that, with tears distilled by moans, the obsequies that I for thee will keep nightly shall be to bestrew thy grave and weep. <laughs> the boy gives signal. 
signal, something doth approach. Huff me night a while. Montague, that did slay my lost cousin, with which grief it is supposed the fair creature died, and, and is here come to do some villainous shame to the bodies. I, I will apprehend him. I will apprehend him.